Hello, have you heard about BetterHelp? They're this episode's sponsor. BetterHelp is an alternative option to in-person counseling. You can do it anywhere as long as you have a connection via computer or phone. Within just 48 hours of registering, you can match with a professional to speak about your issues. And if you don't feel like it's a good match, BetterHelp lets you switch until you find the right professional. So make sure to check out betterhelp.com slash beauty bar. There are so many different counselors that specialize to suit your specific needs, whether it's trauma, family issues, or anxiety. There's a whole list you can check out on their website, along with opportunities for financial aid for those qualified. I think mental health is so important. It's something we should all care about in the same way we exercise our body for physical health. And I appreciate services such as BetterHelp that exist to help make counseling more accessible. So if you feel you need a professional that really cares to speak with, I suggest checking out BetterHelp as a potential option. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash beautybar. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash beautybar. Welcome to the Beauty Bar, where we tend to beautiful people just like you. We're your hosts, Joan. And Stephanie. And we want to make sure you're treating not just your face, but more importantly, your face yourself, right? I do this. I, this is my second time doing this. It's okay. It's, it's okay. cute. Believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's cute. cute. Believe it. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> Today, we're talking about the elusive high fashion modeling mm-hmm. world. And we just had the pleasure talking with male model Matthew from New York, who is also a huge TikTok star. Yes. And I'm not a model. You are. <laughs> he is. And so I was so fascinated by the scouting process and what goes on in, in your guys' heads, what you guys think about. So this is a very informative episode for those who want to become models because I learned a lot and I feel like Maybe Mm -hmm. I can go to a festival right now in a really cute outfit. And who knows? Who knows? Hold up a sign. Yeah, hold up a sign. Sign me. Sign me. (laughs) It was really interesting because Mm -hmm. also, number one, he's a male model. So Mm -hmm. that whole side of the industry definitely is different. Different. And also, I didn't do as much runway because I'm a shorty. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There was an episode where Ashley was here and we were all standing up. And in the comments, people thought like she was standing up and we were sitting down. No, 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 no. Stephanie and I are the same height and we're Ashley shorties. is just really tall. I just I just laughed when I saw those yeah. comments because I was like, no, we're, we're all standing. We're the minis. <laughs> we are. If you don't know who Matthew is, you might have seen him on your TikTok for you page. Mm -hmm. He's done a lot of content on the backstage of modeling. He's walked for major brands and worked with brands like Calvin Klein. Dior. Yes. And he, yeah, he Mm -hmm. talked about a little bit about how he met ASAP Rocky, Mm -hmm. right? I think that's what it was. Um, So he's a big deal right now. And one of his videos actually went viral Mm -hmm. about what he thinks while he's walking Walking. on these major runway Mm -hmm. for these huge shows. Right. So I'm… You can relate. I mean, I don't really do runway. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) but you you can relate to the whole process of modeling though. Like what goes on in mind when you're getting ready, when you're getting ready for a shoot, things like that, right? (laughs) I think about what I'm going to eat later. (laughs) I'm just so excited. I'm like, tonight it's some (laughs) gibsai. So we are going to go straight into the interview. But before we get started, make sure to follow and review this podcast on Spotify and on Apple Podcast. And if you hate (laughs) ads, consider becoming a member of the Dive Studios Patreon where you can access ad-free episodes. Let's welcome a new beautiful face to the show, a high fashion model on the runway and TikTok. Matthew, right? Uh, Hi. Yeah, Hi. Yes. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Yes. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. good. It's very nice. early. It's really late for him. <laughs> so I guess okay. it works out, right? You're in New uh, York right uh, now? I am. Yeah, I'm at my apartment in New York. I just moved here. I am so jealous. You are living the TikTok dream. I feel like a lot of 
TikTok. You see a lot of New York vlogs on TikTok. Is that why you wanted to also move there? Because there's so many places to. <laughs> no, that's not why. No, I just like you have to kind of like choose like to work, to live in New York, Paris, Milan, or London.、Mm -hmm. And since I'm American, I just thought New York would be the place to go, and it's worked out so far. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen your photos of the runway. I was like, on the runway, I was like, yes. But you're originally from Canada. No, did I get、mm -hmm. that wrong? Canada, yeah. right? Yeah. Nice.、Yeah. And then you moved just recently to New York. Yeah. So it's kind of a complicated story. So I was born and raised in Toronto, and then when I was 14, I moved to Indiana. Mm. Which is like some random state、uh, in the Midwest. I've actually been there. Really? No way. <laughs> I have. For what?、Um, For, to for drive what? past.、Oh, <laughs> to、okay. drive. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. To just go through it to get somewhere. Else. Yeah, to、But、New York. Actually, that, that's yeah. Uh huh. And then I did. I moved back to Canada for two years to go to University of Toronto.、Mm. And then now I'm taking a. Uh, like a year off of school, and I moved to New York, and then in a year I'll have to see like whether I want to like go back to college or like keep modeling full time. That's awesome! Wow,、yeah. really、Super、living、cool. the dream, living the dream. Yes,、yeah. and you were scouted, right? Yes, I was.、Uh, oh my god, this story is so <laughs> crazy, and I feel like I never get tired of telling it, even though I've said <laughs> it like probably like fifty times. Like I was at a music festival in Toronto,、uh, an EDM festival called Veld, and it's super crazy. And it's like my favorite two days out of the year, like every single year. And I was just with my friends, and we were walking from like one stage to the other. And this guy that I didn't know, it's just a random guy, like pulls me away from my friends, and it's like, "Are you represented by anyone?" <laughs> and I was like, I had to think about it because I didn't even know what he was talking about.、Um, <laughs> And I was like, no, I guess not. And he gave me his card and was like, I think that you should be like a runway model. Like, I think this would be like really good for you. Blah blah blah. I really think you should do this. And I、uh, just took his word for it and went for it. And then it kind of worked out. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's like even more the dream. Yeah. I love hearing、yeah. those stories of people who just randomly <laughs> <laughs> get it's, discovered. It's really, really, really common. Concerts, especially, like almost every other model I've talked to is like I was at like a Lil Yachty concert or I was at Rolling Loud, and like they all get scouted at concerts. It's super、They、weird. Wow. Just,、like, that's a that's a great、yeah. tip for people who want to be models. Go to every <laughs> single festival.、Yeah. I will scout it at the mall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for real? No, but my agent does、yeah. that too. He, I see him in the mall when I'm shopping for clothes, <laughs> and he's just looking for other models. They do、yeah. that. They and even us. I was with Wilhelmina, and they always said,、mm. if you see somebody、mm. that you think has potential, like when you're out somewhere, give them. Like our card, and、oh, then、wow. yeah. they would cut you like a percentage. <laughs> wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like you were putting them on. Yeah. How、um, did yeah. your family initially feel about you being approached for modeling? Were they supportive? Well, no, not at the beginning.、Mm. Uh, they thought it was a scam, and you know, I thought it was、mm -hmm. a scam too because I was like. When I got the card at the festival, I was like, I have to be cautious about this because I didn't think it was very common for people to be scouted at music festivals. So I was like, this is just like a weird place to be, like you know, scouting for runway models.、Mm -hmm. But、uh, then my agent came in and we had lunch. He took my me and my parents out to lunch, and he needed to take my parents out because I was seventeen at the time. So like I wasn't an adult and I couldn't even sign the contract by、mm. myself. So he needed their. Approval, and he like sat them down, and、uh, he basically like calmed them down, and was like, "This is not a scam." <laughs> and、uh, basically, you can tell whether it's a scam or not based on whether they're charging you for test shoots or not.、Oh. So like, if you're signed to Wilhelmina, you know、mm -hmm. the scammy agencies are like, "Okay, we want to sign you, but let's do a two thousand dollar test shoot." To、mm -hmm. get your digital's, it should always be free, and、mm -hmm. it should they should just take a percentage of your、mm -hmm. work so that they want to give you work. That's how it should work. And then、That's、when my dad heard、point. that, 
he was like, yeah, okay, that's cool. We can do this. No, I yeah. love that you're saying that because many people, they want to get into modeling mm -hmm. so badly and they get taken advantage of. And like you said, you should never pay up front if the agency believes in you. They mm -hmm. will then basically pay up front and then later just take it out of your income. Mm -hmm. What you make yeah. for them. Yeah. And oh, that's like, but I know I would feel the same. I did the same thing when I first got scouted. I was like, is this real? Mm -hmm. And yeah. So good. I think it's good for your parents that they were suspicious. Yeah. Because who it, knows? It, you are right. Like, it's really unfortunate. Like, they they really do, like, take advantage of, like, a lot of kids. Because uh, it's, like, a lot of people, like, grow up and, like, modeling is, like, their dream. And then they get, to, they just run into the wrong agency and the agency just takes advantage of them. And then after that $2,000 test shoot, they basically, like, you don't hear from them, like, ever mm -hmm. again. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So when did yeah. you realize, um, wow, this is actually the real deal? What was like your first big job? Um, so my first job ever was the uh, Calvin Klein show in New York when Ralph wow. Simmons was the creative director. And I was actually exclusive for that. So they booked me like ahead of time. And I couldn't like even if I wanted to, I couldn't work for anyone else until the show happened. Um, and that show was when I was like, okay, this is like, this is like for real, for real. Like when, when, when they were talking to me after the show and they were like, ASAP was there, Millie Bobby oh Brown was gosh. there. Oh my gosh. Like Stranger Things season you one had just came ASAP. out. You got me at ASAP. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so after I heard that, I was like, yo, this is crazy. And like, I don't know, just like talking to the other models that were like doing this as a career. I was like, maybe I could do this as a career. Mm -hmm. And then I quit my job back home. Like after that show, it was like I had only done one show and I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, quit wow. My job. Yeah. So you were 17 when you did your first project? Yes. And it was a major project. That's huge. Yes. Wow. And oh. my agent had to chaperone me. And oh. my first season in Paris and Milan, my parents flew out with me because I was 17 mm. and it was really sweet because like I got to like bring them backstage and like they got to see like the life and like my dad like drove me to castings in a, in a rental car like it was just like I the love best that. Yeah. that is Aww. so cute it was I, the best because yeah. many times when the when models come to Asia they're like 16 17 mm. or even younger I've seen girls here as young as 14 and they come without their parents mm. and I'm like how do you even because me yeah. I I started when I was like 18 19 so I was relatively old mm -hmm. when I got scouted and mm -hmm. doing everything by myself it was quite overwhelming and especially if you're in a city you don't know so mm -hmm. I am yeah. a little bit jealous that, you know, when you kind of started that you had like your parents there and because I'm like, where is anything? Oh, yeah. my God, where do I go? Yeah. That's yeah. that's yeah. lovely. And I think your parents also could then trust that this is real because they actually got to see mm -hmm. behind the yeah. scenes a little bit. Right. Yeah, yeah. They, they got very comforted by it. And they so basically uh, Milan is first, London is second and uh, Paris is last for men's so they stuck with me in Milan and in London and then in Paris they there were a few days where they were just like you know like you can do this like by yourself just like they had to come with me to the shows but for the castings and the fittings they were just like yeah, go ahead. <laughs> they're like, like go ahead we'll go yourself. to the Eiffel Tower we'll have yeah, our own exactly, little vacation exactly. <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I had a um, question. So you said your first big job, Calvin Klein runway show. How mm -hmm. did you know how to walk, how to do it? Did you just kind of <laughs> go by feeling? Because there's no like class. They're like, here you go. <laughs> Good luck. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know that, that there's no like, they don't show you like a YouTube video on like a walking right. tutorial. It's just like, you kind of just like figure it out by yourself. Like, so I should make a TikTok video about this, but my agent flew with me to New York because, and he ended up being my chaperone for the show. And he, uh, basically we were in the hotel that uh, Calvin put me up in and it was before like the fitting and he was just like, 
he took me out into the hallway of the hotel and was just like, okay, Matthew, we got like one hour and we just have to get you like runway walk, like ready, like right now. So he just like had me walk up and down the hallway, <laughs> the hallway. and just like gave me pointers. Like the thing about the runway walk though, is it's not like, not everyone's is the same and some people do certain things and it still has to feel natural. Like you can't, if you like, like, swing your arms when you walk and mm. someone's telling you don't swing your arms it's just gonna come out like rigid and, <laughs> and weird so you you have to find like your own walk but his his thing was always like the pace because like how fast it is that can't change no matter mm. what you what else you're doing with your walk like it has to be fast mm -hmm. so he kept on drilling me and he kept on being like faster like walk faster like keep your back straight like just these little tips until I finally got it and then you get in the fitting and you black out like it's just like it's just muscle memory at that point and like you're not after the fittings over you're like I'm not sure if like my walk was good or not but it ended up working out did Nick, you watch? left right left right oh. left right yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> you can really psych yourself out like if you think too hard like you'll start like you know how when you walk you walk with opposite arm and leg Like, if you psych yourself up too much, you can start with the same arm and yeah. leg, and then your walk gets all, like, scrambled after You're that. like, what do I usually do? And I go, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> How do I even walk anymore? Yeah. yeah. Did you watch a lot of fashion shows before? Because I feel like if I... Not not at all? At all? No, really? I, no, I Even no after idea. you signed with the agent, and you knew you were going to be walking, you were like, okay, I'll just wing it sort of thing? He showed me some videos of, of his other models that mm. were signed walking, like their digitals. Uh, but yeah, I, I know, I don't, I never, I didn't watch like, you know, like 90s archives or even like the previous seasons, like what kids were walking. I was just like, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. we're, I have a question because you did blow up on TikTok, you did appear on my For You page a few times about the behind the scenes exposing the runway uh, contents. And I want to know, right. were your agents and other professionals telling you to utilize social media or was it just something you wanted to do naturally? Because you were very young when you started and I feel like that's when a lot of People started to post more on Instagram and TikTok. I really want to hear about this. Are they mad that you're exposing the runway? What What's uh, all the details on that? I I wouldn't say like I'm not exposing anything. Mm -hmm. Like it's I, I I tend to associate exposing with like something negative, mm -hmm. like you're you're outing someone. Mm -hmm. But I'm really just like showing like the the process from a model's perspective. You know, I'm not like. I'm not like, you know, there's no big scandal I'm revealing or anything like that. But uh, to answer your question, like, basically, so I was on TikTok early, like, mm. way back in the day, like 2018, 2019. So I spent like a good like year and a half, like using the app and not posting on it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, when I think it was right when COVID hit, I was really bored. Like I was hella bored. Were we all? <laughs> yeah, just sitting in the house. And then you're just like, and then I thought to myself, like, you know, I've been on this app for like a year and a half and there's no other runway model making content. Like I see all my like my uh, coworkers on Instagram all the time. And every mo every runway model has like an Instagram that they post their shows and their shoots on. But I was like, I've not seen like a single one of these kids on TikTok yet. So I just started and I made a few videos. And my first video that blew up was uh, I just compiled. I was at my house in Indiana and my parents keep all my editorial magazines that I have that I'm in. <laughs> and I just made a quick little video of like my magazines. And then that's the first video that blew up. And I was like, okay, let's just like take it from here. Wow, you just never know what's gonna mm -hmm. do well on TikTok. You ne it's that's like the craziest thing is <laughs> I could put so much at like hours and hours of effort into a video and it'll get like no views compared to my other ones and then I make a two second video about like hey one time ASAP Rocky was behind state like backstage at Raf Simmons and it gets four times as many views. Like wow. it's yeah. I never know which videos are gonna do well and which don't. 
Wow. And it changed also yeah. so much. When I started 10 years ago, like Instagram was barely like a thing. Mm-hmm. But now uh, when I was in LA, at every casting, they would ask about your social media handles. Mm-hmm. And they would definitely yeah. prefer models who have like a higher follower count than like models who wouldn't Mm -hmm. and it became like such a thing and also pressure from the agents being like work on your social media like it was just got so stressful i think that's kind of toxic though it's like social media still should come from a place of like fun and like Mm -hmm. when you start putting pressure on growing then you might start making content that you don't enjoy making Mm -hmm. just to get views and that's not healthy and i think it's i still don't like Obviously, it plays into my strengths when a casting director is like, how many Instagram followers do you have? How many TikTok followers do you have? But Mm -hmm. I still don't. It feels uncomfortable when people ask because it's like, are we really putting like a worth on Mm -hmm. followers like so directly? Mm -hmm. Like I know we as a society already do that. Like when you see someone with lots of Instagram followers, you're like, oh, this person's cool, like automatically. Mm -hmm. But to put it in such a like a direct way, like oh, this is going to affect whether you get this job or not. Mm -hmm. Like, it feels bad. Like, no matter what, it feels bad. Yeah. You sort of did start organically, even on TikTok. Yes, you got Mm -hmm. scouted at a festival, but you were able to utilize TikTok at the rise of TikTok. And here you are on your first podcast, right? Yeah, Yeah, on my first podcast. (laughs) Like, you guys are, you guys are my number one. Oh, Please record that and keep that (laughs) everywhere. I would love that. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that. Well, now that you've been modeling for a few years now, did you have any expectations when you first started or even before you got scouted of, oh, this is how I kind of imagine what a model is like or what the work is like versus what now the reality of it is? Uh, yeah. So I thought it was like a lot more glamorous than it is, especially when you're a new face. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You're like, oh, the jadedness. Seems oh, already? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> when you watch like movies like Zoolander or when you think even just about runway modeling, like Naomi Campbell and all that, you think about like the most glamorous, like very like luxe, rich lifestyle. But when you're a new face and you're 17 years old and you're basically when you're a new face, you're making like no money. Like you're Mm -hmm. working a lot because you're a new face, but your rate is so low because you're a new face and you haven't proven yourself. Uh, You're like slumming it out. Like you're in model apartments, like with like eight other guys in one room, like triple bunk beds, like rats and roaches. And then at this, but it's such a weird dynamic because it's like, I literally am sleeping next to a rat in my room, but I have to wake up the next day and I have to walk for Ralph Lauren. Like it's, and it's, and you show up and it's the show is super posh and all that. Mm -hmm. And then you go home from that job and you're like, oh my God, like this is disgusting. (laughs) Don't believe everything you see on social media. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not as luxe. Uh, It can be sometimes, mm. but it's usually not as luxe as people think. Yeah. I go home yeah. and eat cup ramen and I'm like, this is not yeah. what it was on set. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You expressed that you were able to make genuine connections and friendships with people such as designing teams and fellow models. But is there a truth behind the catty stereotype of being a model? Uh, no, not, not oh. that I've experienced. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes you just run into people that are a bit nosy. Like, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, did you confirm that? Did you get option for this? But, mm-hmm. I mean, to be honest, for the most part, like, no one really cares. It's more like just having, like, a big group of friends. Mm-hmm. I would compare it, actually, if you guys know, to uh, Formula One teams. Like, mm-hmm. it's a very small, tight-knit group of guys. Mm-hmm. And we're all kind of friends because we all do the same jobs. Mm-hmm. And we see each other all the time at castings at fashion weeks and on set. But yeah, at the end of the day, you kind of are competing with them. But I don't think we really like let it get to us. Like we're all just super nice and friendly still. 
Oh, yeah. that's so important. Otherwise, it also takes out the fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sometimes there'd be like this one random girl or guy who's like super weirdly competitive. Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh-huh. okay, like calm down. Like, yeah, yeah. it's it's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a good or thing. Or like super braggy. Like, that's the worst. Mm. Yeah. Like, oh, I just confirmed this thing with this <laughs> photographer. And I'm like, I don't care, man. Like, <laughs> I don't care, man. <laughs> good for you. Yeah, happy for you. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you don't have that toxic environment Mm -hmm. then. I think you got really lucky. I think think, uh, I I can't say this for sure because I'm not a girl, but I think it is like a little bit more competitive for girls because there's more at stake. Mm. Like the rates are higher. The jobs are more like intense. The work is more intense in general. Um, So I think it can be a little bit more competitive for them. But for guys, it's like less high stakes. So it's like everyone's kind of more chill. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. always a little bit jealous of male models because they take such less time in hair and makeup. I'm mm. so jealous. I would sit mm. there for hours and they're pulling my hair and doing this. Mm. And it yeah. would be crazy. And male models, they're like in and out, <laughs> rub on some body oil <laughs> and they're good to go. Mm. And yeah, it's like the <sighs> girls have to get there like it. Their call time is like an hour earlier than the boys and they get they're the first ones in the hair and makeup chair. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I by know, the time you sucks. arrive, every the girls are walking out all fully mm-hmm. glammed up. They're like on their mm-hmm. fourth coffee. Oh my and- gosh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a while with me though. Like if they need to straighten my hair, that's usually a big ordeal. Like mm. hours in the chair. Just like every single strand of hair getting flat ironed. Yeah. And they're yeah. like, then don't sit there and don't touch anything. Don't move. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just sit there in the chair. Don't wrinkle the clothes, but don't sit down, but also don't yeah. stand. Uh-huh. What? I can't do it. I respect you guys a lot. Um, I I never really heard a lot of the behind the scenes of models. So I like learned a lot today. And I feel like a lot of listeners who want to be models will get a lot out of this episode because I didn't know that you can get scouted at festivals. And I feel like, oh, I should have been to more of those <laughs> when I was younger. Or I don't know. It's just, it's really cool to listen to. So yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Do you have any other advice for people who want to break into the industry? I would just say in general, like don't let it get to your head too much. Like if you want to be a model... Make sure that you want to be a model for like the right reasons. And and if it's getting very toxic and mentally draining, because it does, because the industry is at the end of the day, like based on looks, like don't get me wrong, like having a great personality helps a lot with castings and you can make connections with people and that really helps a lot. And sometimes for a campaign or a shoot, they just need like someone with a great personality that's going to show on camera. Mm -hmm. But if it is getting to you mentally like it does for me sometimes just because when you're not working and you're not getting booked in those slow periods of up and downs Mm -hmm. it's like it gets to you because it's like oh this is because of the way I look and if you Mm -hmm. start thinking about that too much and it gets too toxic then I would recommend just to like stop and if I ever get in that way I promise you I will stop as well like it can't be a toxic industry. Like, if it's toxic for you, then yeah, it's not healthy. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It's it yeah. definitely, like you said, because it's so much about looks. Just mm-hmm. trying to keep, you know, a good, cool head about things and not take it too serious mm-hmm. all the time, which is hard sometimes. Because, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, it's everything. But like you said, it comes in such waves. Like, there will be months or weeks where I'm working every day. It's so busy. I don't even know my own name. And then there's like mm-hmm. weeks where I'm just like, la 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 at home, like, oh, what's happening? Mm-hmm. And yeah. like being okay with that, it took me a long time mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. okay with that. And you probably go through that too, where it's like, John's like, I'm always busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, I am oh, up uh, to here. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a different job though. Yeah. So I do, uh, I don't think I could do what you guys do because I do know that you have to wake up super early. You have to have pounds of makeup or hairspray on you. And I hate that feeling. And I do want to ask you on how you take care of your skin and hair later. Um, Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a a different job. So um, yeah, it balances out, I guess. 
Oh my, I started yeah. this. I have this pet peeve now of people washing my hair. Oh, really? Yeah. Because sometimes yeah, on cause set, they'll like, they'll wash your hair before. I just started hating it. Oh. I don't know why. They always tell me to come with my hair dirty. Like, oh, I, yeah. I can't wash it. Like, yeah. They're like, oh. don't wash your hair. So they'll be like, sometimes like five days in a row where I'm just not washing my hair every day. And they get, like, I read that love somewhere. the grease. Mm. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Natural. They love the grease. They <laughs> for real do. Yeah. So after the runway with all that hairspray, you come home and you still can't wash that off? Sometimes. And sometimes that's the worst because it's usually during fashion week. Uh-huh. So most times like you get out from the show and like for me, it's usually when they straighten my hair and put product in it. Uh-huh. So my hair is like one with all the hairspray. It's one solid object. Like it all moves in, <laughs> yeah. one, you know, in one piece. And I'm just like, oh, my God, like I have like a casting, like a callback to go to right now. And I obviously can't show up with my hair as like one, like, it looks like Lego hair. Like it looks like it just got painted on a bald head. Uh And I'm like, oh shoot. So you're in the, these small European bathrooms with this sink that's the size of like this cup right here. Yeah. And you're trying to wash all this out, but the, the, the sink is like motion activated. So it's only coming in bits and pieces. It's a nightmare sometimes. Yeah. It's the worst. Wow. So how does a a fashion week usually look like for you? How can we imagine your schedule? Mm. It it like depends, especially right now, since it's COVID, it's very odd. Like there's not all the shows are uh, happening. Like some brands have elected to still do digital shows or whatever. And I've noticed that there's a lot more brands doing shows outside of Fashion Week Mm -hmm. or during Fashion Week, but in different cities. Mm -hmm. Like if it was Milan Fashion Week, there's a lot of shows in like Florence and Rome and just like cities around that. Mm -hmm. But for a typical Fashion Week, you pull up on the first day and it just starts right away. Like you have like castings to go to and it, it... It's like every day is just hectic. It's like you'll have like castings, fittings, shows on like every day of the week if you're having a great week. Um, So yeah, I don't know. It doesn't really move in like a wave. Like it, I wish it did. I wish it was like castings at the beginning beginning of the week, fittings in the middle of the week and shows at the end Mm -hmm. of the week. But unfortunately, that's just not how it goes. It's all mixed together. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's messy. Wow. Do you have any um, anything you would like to pursue after modeling or in the future? Oh, yeah. What did you yeah. want to do before modeling? Yeah. What did you go to? Uh, what did you study? Yeah, I was a uh, I was a marketing student. And oh. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I mm-hmm. thought it was like the coolest, like coolest major in business. Was yeah. Marketing. Yeah. I thought it was kind of sick. And like when or if like. Because modeling is a very, like, you either, like, make enough money in, like, your small frame of window to live forever or you get this longevity that you can work for longer than usual in the industry (laughs) and then you're fine. But uh, if either of those don't happen, I would just go back to college, finish my degree, and then become a marketing manager. Yeah, and you'll have the actual experience mm-hmm. of what it's like to be a model and how yeah. to I don't know that that's awesome it just worked yeah, out so I would perfectly love to do like yeah I would love to do like something with like fashion marketing because mm. there's a lot of marketing that goes into marketing clothes so and then my resume would be like super I'm a safe. model yeah. yeah yeah I can only imagine what those interviews would be like interview you would be like all right so it says here you were a model and then it I feel like for any interviews, if you sound interesting and if you make it seem like you changed the entire modeling, you know, entertainment, I feel mm-hmm. the industry, mm-hmm. I feel like it would be very beneficial to anything yeah. you do, really. Mm. I actually put modeling on my uh, university application. Oh, I think it helped a lot. Yeah, I just put a link to my models.com uh, profile, which has all my jobs and shows on it. And I think it actually helped like a lot. I think it Uh might have been what got me in maybe. Did you do interviews for college or was Mm. it just a 
application process? No, they just uh, like let me in after the application. <laughs> They're, They're like, cover. model, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tech, do you want to be on the next textbook cover? <laughs> or the yeah. uh, ge- college gear oh, yeah, cover? Oh, you want to model the UFT gear. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I wish. That would have actually been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. All right. So we want to ask you, since it is the beauty bar, what mm-hmm. is your typical skincare and beauty routine like? Right. My skin is actually like not like super, super duper clear. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think it's probably because of the way that I work. Like these days, like with like how I have to fly. I take like four flights a week on average. And what happens with the mask is your skin gets Mm -hmm. all gunked up during the flight and it's already dry on the plane. So that just Mm -hmm. makes it like 10 times worse. And then like with the makeup and all that, like honestly, like it's a, I think it's a big misconception that models have perfect skin. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for everyone to know that they don't. Mm-hmm. And I've seen your favorite runway model, no matter who it is, and without makeup on, they do still have blemishes on their face. Mm-hmm. That's important for everyone to know, because if even runway models have acne, then it's completely normal for everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, but honestly, my skincare routine is uh, philosophy products, mm-hmm. like uh, their purity face wash and their purity exfoliating face wash and uh, Innisfree. Oh, the yes. Korean skincare brand. Yes. I use their green tea stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> green nice. tea so that's stuff. My yeah, oh, that's my nice. Moisturizer and my uh, balancing whatever. Mm. Yeah. Oh, but that's such a good point, especially, you know, as a working model, the amount of makeup they slap on your face almost mm. daily. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. There's nothing you can do. You And then also all the flights you take, you will break out, definitely. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think it's very good that you also put awareness to that that no models also have bad skin yeah and it's all good (laughs) yeah 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 and i really mean that like you're like the most like even the most like well-known famous models like they still like come to work sometimes they've got a pimple and it's like no big deal yeah like it's perfectly fine it's chill it is i saw a fashion show where they they didn't cover any acne. I forgot who it was, but I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. They just focused mm-hmm. on the clothes and just showing the naturalness uh, and realness of skin is skin. We're all human. And I feel like there should be more fashion shows mm-hmm. like that because it's yeah. it's real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a trend I've noticed because there was a period in COVID where they opted to not have hair makeup on Mm -hmm. set because it was another like it was another like liability for covid Mm -hmm. spread and i've noticed that there's some brands that just like even now that everything's kind of back to normal they just they still they have the hair makeup people for hair Mm -hmm. they just kind of leave the skin alone sometimes yeah i think that's like kind of nice yeah Mm. very refreshing Well, thank you so much for sharing your beauty secrets with us. I feel like you have a great routine going on and your thank skin you. looks great. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking glowy. about. It's, yeah. win- it's getting it's getting dry now and mm-hmm. like wintry. And I've got this big like light in my face. Like <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But is thank it, you. Thank you. Is New York um getting really cold? I'm going next week, yeah. so <laughs> I wanna know. It's on and off. So today it was like 70, uh-huh. but there's there was like a couple times in like the past like few weeks where it was like 50s and 60s. Uh-huh. So it's like up and down, but it's getting cold for sure. Oh my God, mm-hmm. good luck. I yeah. like the cold though, so I'm excited. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll be able to see you while I'm there. Sure. I'm going to Montreal and oh. I have no idea where I'm going oh, okay. to after Halloween. Mm. Okay. I could be somewhere else in mm. Europe or something. Oh, we'll that's, see. You're that's busy. where I'll be. <laughs> oh, really? You're going to? I'm going to Germany next month. In, in December. Oh, I'm like, what? What mm. month is it? I'm so excited. No, oh. I've mm. only been to Germany once, but it was pretty cool. Yeah. I hope you had good food and good beer. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, no and problem. we hope to see you here in Korea. I oh yeah I need to like say something about this. I'm half Korean and I've Mm -hmm. never been to Korea 
and I've been modeling for three years as like a consistently working model mm -hmm. and I've no Korean brand has ever booked me so I'm like someone needs to like get me out there all right oh industry come on you we'll heard start it putting up the flyers today <laughs> right yeah. oh wow so hopefully sometime soon i'll be out there and i could see y'all or something yeah, yeah that'd be great yeah. korea is really mm -hmm. fun mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it would be yeah. awesome if you could come here and they have like they even have seoul fashion week here yeah they do yeah i know because the street style for uh seoul fashion week yeah. is always the best and the editorials out in Korea are crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yeah. they're so, so good. The fashion magazines, yeah. mm -hmm. I love doing editorials here. They're mm -hmm. just, yeah, they make me cool. look yeah. so good. I'm like, yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if any one of those, please book mm -hmm. me. Like I'm trying to see my homeland for real. Yes, if anyone's listening to this episode right now, please contact Matthew. <laughs> 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 yeah, hopefully we have someone out. listening. Yeah. yeah. All right. So it's time to wrap up and we want our listeners and viewers on YouTube to know where to find you. Please share your handles. You guys can find me on Instagram at Matthew.Simino and Matthew spelled M-A-T-H-I-E-U dot S-I-M-O-N-E-A-U. And then my TikTok is Matthew Simino. No dot. All nice. right. Thank you. Yeah, that's where you guys can find me. Thank you so much. And we'll see Thank you again you soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. I learned so much from this episode. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely very interesting mm -hmm. behind the scenes look. And man, I, it was just such a pleasure talking with him. Yeah. And just his thoughts on how the modeling industry mm -hmm. works and everything. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yes. So thank you, Matthew. And I hope to, we hope that we will be able to see you in Korea one day. Um, but yeah, if you wish to stay updated on this show, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Dive Studio. We're also on TikTok. Full episodes on youtube.com slash dive pods. Also, please join us on Patreon at patreon.com dash the dive studios for exclusive exclusive content and ad-free listening from the Dive Studios Network. Once again, subscribe to and review this podcast and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye! You like that? You like that? You want some of that? You want some of that? <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. And please turn on the notification bell and you'll never miss an episode. Nope.